Gore. Do, do, do. What is it good for? Absolutely everything. Say it again. Oh my god, what am I doing? Gore in video games. That's what we're talking about today. Um, you don't have to be a psychopath to enjoy uh, some satisfying, gruesome violence in a video game. It's just part of video games and it's fun. And from Mortal Kombat to Street Fighter to The Last Ninja to Last of Us to uh, any game ever, including Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I'm currently working on. Um, uh, there's a lot of violence. <laughs> Video games has always had a funny uh, sort of parallel history with violence, kind of like horror films and stuff. Um, it's just fun, let's be honest, and it's cool. Um, so I've made a lot of video games and out of the video games I've made, most of those have had uh, a lot of violence in them. Um, you know, I've worked on the Crisis games and Homefront and Alien vs Predator and um, I can't remember all the games I've worked on. Um, did I say Homefront already? <laughs> um, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, obviously, and just just a lot of games. I think I, I, I counted and I've worked on eight games where you can stab someone in the neck. And that's just crazy because uh, why so much neck stabbing? But there you go. But if you're a sound designer for video games or you're just interested in video games, you might want to know a few tips and tricks that I've developed over the years uh, because it's a really fun part of sound design because it's like a cinematic element and the sort of more cinema cinematic elements of video games it, that's really something that really interests me it's it's so much fun and it's very rewarding and it's very rewarding for the for the end user i mean if you think of games like god of war um games like that they just rely on so much cinematic heft and that weight and that, that satisfying thunk of the sound design it's it's absolutely crucial so um let's dig in um what i'm going to do for this is i'm going to what am i going to do for an order here let's see let's i'm going to play you a trailer for the texas chainsaw massacre um in this trailer i did all the sound design 100 percent. it's it's my um executions from in-game directly lifted from in-game they're, they're not like um designed on top of that to be fancier for the trailers they sound cool as they are modesty aside i really like them um so this was a recent trailer that we we did and it just features like a sequence of executions so i will uh show you that just as like an example of um like modern gore sound design uh, then I'm going to come back to you and then we'll chat through a few stages of like pre-production, production and post-production tips for gore sound designing games. Um, and then I guess what am I going to do? Oh yeah, I'm going to do like a, a practical. Um, I will actually uh, open Cubase and I will um, just from scratch make you a few gore sounds like maybe like a, a knife slice, a proper slice into the body and back again and something else and and I'll just show you what I do the kind of sounds I layer on because you can talk and talk and talk but I think just seeing someone layering and, and designing the stuff is very very valuable that's what we're going to do so um, I really hope this is helpful to you this is an area that is so much fun in terms of sound design excuse me for being a psychopath and enjoying it but um, uh, if you like like horror films and stuff or action films then this is valuable information i hope and and a lot of fun so uh oh yeah a little quick warning i mean if you're this far into it hopefully you're not too squeamish the trailer i'm about to show features a lot of violence and i'll be talking about a lot of um well it's really sound design related to violence but it's all going to get kind of gross and a bit graphic from here on so if you're uncomfortable with uh violence then this isn't for you um i do lots of other tutorials maybe just move over to one of those so uh just be warned, <laughs> it's going to get gross. Here we go. Be a lot of fear, but we'll be on the road. Alright, 
so uh, yeah that's just a bit of an example of gore in video games and um, so you know where I'm coming from with like my style of sound design um, the the sound design of the executions in Texas Chainsaw was inspired by some very specific things even from the beginning of the project I was already carrying that um, knowledge with me and, and and always thought if I was doing something that had like um, a very aggressive scenes I would like to, to bring to it so um, the elements there and these are things that uh, you should really go and just have a look at because I think they're really good points of reference I can give you three very specific examples of my, my favorite scenes of it sounds really creepy but I want to call it intimate violence which is what I was trying to do for Texas Chainsaw first one was Saving Private Ryan there's the um, scene where uh, I, I don't know what the actor's name is and I feel bad I should have researched before this but he was Chandler's roommate and friends who who was crazy and had like a, a little fish who was a biscuit but there's one point where he's getting killed by a German soldier with a knife really slowly in the chest and um, the camera is very intimate and it's very um, slow and the sound design is very understated like they could have done big scraping metal as it went into his body but it's so much worse when you don't hear it it's just like soft it's just horrific which is more memorable more cinematic more powerful the second scene is no country for old men uh quite early in the film the bad guy uh oh god i want to say anton no i'm getting it wrong that's the actor's name Oh fuck, sorry. If you remember the, the bad guy's name in the film, please comment and um, I'll feel bad that I didn't remember. But um, there's a scene near the beginning of the film where in the police station he puts his handcuffs around the police officer's neck, grabs him to the ground and then again it's, it's a scrabble that it's very, uh, the shots are very intimate. You see a lot of close shots of, of uh, bad guy's face and um, it's, there's just gurgling and, and foley. And it's just, it's very, very uh, evocative and very powerful. The third one is, um, oh yeah, um, Killing Them Softly, an amazing film. Uh, I don't hear people talking about that film as much as they should, it's, it's amazing. But there's a horrific scene where uh, Ray Liotta gets beaten up on the side of a car. Um, and, you know, in terms of the 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 scale of, of what happens in cinema, of like what happens to people in horror films and things, um, you would say that someone just getting beaten up a lot on the side of a car wouldn't be that bad. But I think that scene I found maybe the most harrowing of any scene in any like action or thriller or horror film ever, just because it was so well executed in every way. But one of the things was they definitely tried to sell the idea of the, the visceral feel of the punches and of what you hear while, it, while it's happening. So you hear like the, um, the sound design of the environment changes as he's getting more and more beaten up. And um, it's, it's incredibly evocative. I would, if you're a, just a fan of cinema or, or uh, game sound design and you might be doing some kind of like, uh, you know, these kind of scenes, definitely watch those three things so you got the guy getting stabbed and saving private ryan um the no country for old men strangling with um uh handcuffs and then that ray liotta scene against the side of a car in killing them softly they were from day one they were my main influences for the sound design for the uh violent scenes in this game um so i'm gonna quickly talk you through three stages of doing the the gore for games we're kind of already in the first stage which is pre-production there's basically a triangle now i'm interested to find out if i'm going to do a little triangle graphic because i'm terrible at doing graphics and stuff like this maybe at this point you'll see a graphic maybe not if not here's a triangle <laughs> um, i hope i do a graphic i bet i don't oh my god um, there's basically three different types of video game violence and and actually this is I think relevant for cinema as well you've got Mortal Kombat basically you've got um, really over the top 
great big slushy awesome sounds and this is in no way a diss to Mortal Kombat I freaking love Mortal Kombat it's one of my favorite games and I love the sound design of it I would I would love to have done that it's so much fun but um they're huge it's full of like cracking bones and it, it's like deep and wet and full frequency um so much so that because to be honest if like if Mortal Kombat did all the things that you saw on screen but it had a realistic feel to it uh, it feels like it'd be like a stuff mo snuff movie it would just be insane so it kind of it makes it better but also more comforting at the same time so that's the top of the triangle over here you've got cinematic which the, the main goal of cinematic sound design for gore is cool basically it's the rule of cool which is what people say for films and games and it's very valid so for that kind of sound design there'll be an element of realism but it's kind of bracketed by uh like kick drum sounds and thumps and um just hefty like sound design techniques to make it sound as thunky and satisfying as possible while delivering the message of the uh the gore that's happening so it's kind of a split message of 50 percent the act that's occurring 50% good sound design, just big and chunky. So like um, the violence you'll see in big Hollywood films, like Marvel films and stuff, that'll be in that area. Uh, even, you know, that mid-level films, uh, most modern films, even say like, um, I guess like Terrifier 2, things like that, they're, they're still gonna be going for mostly somewhere between Mortal Kombat and uh, the cinematic. So the we call Mortal Kombat, I guess, the over-the-top cinematic over here. That's two sides of the triangle. Then we've got the last side, which you don't get very much uh, unless it's very, very gritty cinema, which is realism. Um, because, quite frankly, realism in uh, gore and violence is a lot to deal with. And, like, films and video games are fantasy they're they're not real and we don't want them to be real they're um they're a distraction from normal life and like unless you're a horrific person or a psychopath you don't actually relish actual real violence on people so um realism is difficult it's out of that triangle of, of gore sound design it's the it's the awkward bit um somewhere you can see a lot of it is 70s cinema so films like Easy Rider uh, and uh, Taxi Driver, what they do in uh, the violence in those films is almost nothing. And basically the more minimal sound design gets, uh, films like, like say like Scum as well like that, uh, yeah, very gritty, awful British uh, violent drama from the 70s, 60s maybe. Um, if there's almost no extra sound on top of the violence, it's just violence and it's very hard to listen to um that might sound weird but uh maybe watch like a graphic scene from a film or uh, something that you you like but like turn the sound down you'll see that without the audio that's kind of softening it by parodying the violence it gets it's quite grim it's quite difficult to listen to so there we go you need to pick in your triangle what's appropriate for the project you're working on. Is it over the top? Is it cinematic? Is it realism? And it'll be somewhere in that triangle. Um, I would say for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I was going for some kind of in the middle verging towards realism, I think, is where I would place what I've done. Uh, I wanted it to be harrowing and a little unrelenting and um, not too easy for the listener because even though original Texas Chains were famously didn't show a lot of the violence it was still a very harrowing film even though there's a slight undercurrent of black comedy to it all um, it was a tricky watch at times uh, so so harrowing was my key word for what I wanted so I went for the realism side of the triangle um, Right, let's talk about production. I mean, this is the fun bit now. We're talking about the, the famous area of like, you know, foley and twisting vegetables and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get too deep into that. It's been very well covered over the years. Um, first thing I'd say is about source material. Uh, if you do have your own source material or the capacity to record good quality stuff of your own, 
always do it. I mean, that's a universal rule because you're um, deeply aware of that content and, and possible uses of it. And, and you'll just, you'll get more out of it. I mean, this is your job and your passion. Like if you can go and record whatever it is you're doing, squishing jelly or breaking celery, and then you get to use that in the stuff you're doing, why not go for it? And you'll have that, that, yeah, that intimate connection to the source material gives you a deeper understanding of it. So, so why not? Um, in terms of that material you record and also any like source material you're using, something that I've found over the years you need to be very careful of is, is matching the, the room of the source material. Because that good gore sound design is all about layering and layering until you've got like enough, the right amount and the right punch and the right detail and the right tonality of it. But if you're pulling from different sources, like let's say you've got um, uh, like a sprinkler sound for like a throat getting cut. Um, does that sound like it's outside and there's, there's like the, um, the environmental sounds in terms of like reflections and stuff of it being outside. And then you're trying to match that with like uh, a pure bass drum thump of when the, the throat gets hit. And that's a purely dry sound, that's a synthetic sound, so there's, there's no environmental element to it. Um, if you're pulling from all these different sources, they don't have to be the same source, but listen to them and make sure that if there's uh, if there's reverb or just space in them that you're you're pulling that out and you're drying them out so that they all feel like they're from not the same source, but the but you know, the same rough area. If you've got like uh, flesh being slapped in a warehouse, a dry kick drum, and then uh, you know, um, cutting metal in a small room, that they, they're going to sound disparate, and it will just it it's somehow it's understandably wrong when you hear it in the final context. So try and um, just manipulate your your source material to the point where it sounds like it's coming from roughly the same area before you start layering it. Just it just means cleaning out reverb or just maybe adding a tiny bit of reverb to really dry synthetic material just to meet it in the middle. Um, also, I would say uh, for a really good creative sound design uh, for in this area, you need to go a little bit crazy. Like, um, listen to listen to how it sounds inside your head. I, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> who knows what we all hear in our heads? But for me, like, when I get the idea of what I want to hear, I can hear roughly what it sounds like in my head. Um, and maybe just the source material of, you know, um, meat getting cut or vegetables getting squished or all the usual things uh, won't get you what you want. So if that's not the case, just go a bit left field. I mean, just listen to your, to your head and then just try and break down the elements that are missing. If it's like um, a slash across the body, but it doesn't feel like it's like hitting in like a tethered way, then maybe just find like, I don't know, like a bag getting zipped up or or something getting screwed onto something that has that the, the, the envelope that you want, because it's all there. And uh, it's all about huge amount of layering and nuance for, for this kind of sound design. So just take tiny elements from each thing. I mean, you can always do really sort of subtractive EQing or aggressive like RXing to get all of the content out of it until it's just like the tiny little bit of quantity that you want to add into your sound. Um, and then let's talk about post-production. So definitely don't don't squash the life out of your stuff. Like that's absolutely ridiculous. Like if you've built this beautiful complex sound, don't then, you know, just make it insanely squished and pointless because you lose everything. Um, what you need to do is retain as much dynamics as possible. Make sure that uh, if you're looking at the waveform afterwards, you want to see huge dynamics. If it's if it's a wall, you, you, you've done it wrong. Just go back in. Um, and bringing source material into video games or film, you don't want to, to come in already as a block of sound. That's just no good at all. Um, also, uh, this is true for a lot of sound design, but but this is very true for doing gore and, and like cinematics of, of like fights and things. It might sound really great uh, in your door, but when you move it into the game, very often I don't know why it just doesn't sound right, but be prepared for that. Don't be like defeated or deflated, any of the D's. 
just just give it another go um you may need to just bring it back into your door and just i don't know just like high shelf it get some more of those those frequencies in there because um because you're keeping it quite dynamic you need to uh, make room for it in the game um if you're in a position uh to uh, control what the dynamic sound is in the game or the film at the point that you're adding in your gore sounds then just make sure that there's not too much like super chunky music or hefty sounds um that are competing with with the, the very dynamic content that you've made. If that's the case, then you know that's a, that's a mix issue. It becomes about ducking and priorities, but that's that's up to you to sort out at that point. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to just get into Cubase. Uh, I'm not using Cubase because of any uh, crazy extra abilities in Cubase to do. Um, um, like gore sound design or anything it's just cubase is what i've used my entire career so i use it for all my music all my sound design lots of people for a reaper and maybe you'll be doing it in pro tools it's irrelevant they're all doors they all do the same stuff so don't get hung up on technology um i'll just be bringing in assets you you might see a few plugins and things like that but um uh again this this is more just a case of me showing you layering and picking like uh, moments of attacks and uh, bass thumps and things like that so don't get hung up on specifics this is all about creative ideas um, and I'll be back at the end to say goodbye and I hope this is useful for you see ya all right let's do some sound design enough chatting time for um, sound design <laughs> all right um, so I think what I'm going to do is just do a couple different examples of just sort of gory impact hits of different weapons and stuff like that. Uh, I've got no real plan of what I'm going to do. I'll just do what I would normally do if I was doing this kind of sound design and hopefully you'll be able to get a few little tips and tricks out of it. So what should we say? Let's do like some uh, sort of razor blade slices with, with impacts into flesh. And then let's do like a, a huge knife stab, which is kind of a different sound. Um, and then maybe let's try a, a neck break or like a sort of a bone break. Cause that's actually a really tricky bit of sound design. And I'm, I'm uh, yeah, just be a good challenge. So yeah, all right, let's try some razor bladey swipes. So if the, the weapons are small and slicey, then you really need to, uh, you need to make sure that it feels very kinetic with with all the movement um with these sort of things it can often be more about what happens before and after as much as it is about the actual like impact sound of weapons and stuff so let's um i'll just search through my library and i'll just find some like slicey weapons sounds so let's go like knife slice see what i can find hmm there we go got some butchery sounds <clears throat> so what we got so that bit there is quite nice and i guess that'll be the same and that one looks like it's a bit juicier yep so uh, let's take that one for safety okay and we'll kill the other bits dooby 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 doo there we go and kill that so oh i think i killed one of them by mistake doesn't matter let's just do um let's do two slices and one decisive final slice uh just again um sound design is always about narrative and about uh storytelling and um <clears throat> in this case if you've got a few hits and the last hit is the important one that ends the sequence then you probably want uh, additional drama in that and you want to just sell that one landing extra hard and and brutally so let's have a listen got some little slices they're um, a bit meaty so I'm going to just very quickly just I'm just gonna a high shelf a little bit take the bottom out and then I'll probably uh, it's already better um, uh, what should I do I think I'm gonna pitch them up a little bit just because they're um, a little deep for what we want for a razor blade slice there we go that's only nice 
So um, let's get a nice little rhythm. I mean, normally if I was doing this kind of work, uh, maybe they'd be like uh, untimed sounds if these were just like hit sounds related to player action, if the player's swinging a weapon. But more what I'm interested in at the moment is uh, if we were like uh, track laying for, for a cut scene or a cinematic sequence. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to show you here because that's where you can go a little deeper with the sound design and really design it to emphasize the narrative elements. Uh, I'm just going to throw a few more tracks in here. Okay. So we got a nice little sync. Let's move that together and put a little gap there so that one feels like the last one. So let's cut down this time. Still a bit. We want it more of a flurry. So let's move that to there. And he can go there. Okay, um, I think what we can do now is some airy whooshes. So like, like I said before, um, it's often about what you put around the impact sounds that, that really makes them. So let's find some little whooshes, little air whooshes. I use air whooshes all the time for everything. They're just good sounds. Not that one, that's rubbish. No. All right, come on, let's find a good whoosh. I've got too many whooshes. I've got thousands of them. Uh, I'm just searching my library at the moment. Let's go. Air whoosh. Hmm. No, too low. Too long. I'm going to search for air whoosh fast. No. There we go. We've got some like bow sounds. Uh, I guess this is like um, arrows. So, uh, so little points of impact. I think actually I'm just going to add a little marker track here. Um, like I probably said, I can't remember, but um, <clears throat> um, consider what I'm teaching you or showing you here to be sort of door agnostic. Like, I don't care um, if you're using Reaper or Pro Tools or um, Logic or whatever you want to use. The principles are still the same. And, you know, software changes, things become popular and unpopular. It's no point worrying too much about what specific program. It's, it's better if you just learn the... Uh, the principles of doing good sound design. So here we go. Um, what I'm doing now, uh, I can see that these are just like arrow whooshes, which is good, useful content. So I'm cutting them into like beginning and end bits. Um, so if I just take this whooshy bit here, uh, I'll just stick these over here at the minute. I don't think, I don't know if I need them yet. We'll figure that out in a minute. And I'm gonna put this whoosh here. And then I'm gonna make this one deeper going to pitch that down uh, maybe just fairly subtle so it's not too cartoony um, this sound design that I'm doing here um, I'm going to go with like a sort of a middle ground I'm not going to make it too realistic and I'm not going to make it too cartoony but um, if I mute that I don't even know how this will sound yet but here's just the whooshes uh, come on play why are you not playing and then um, right if I then, uh, all right, they sound a bit noisy, so I'm gonna really, so I'll move this one. I'm gonna really thin them out like that. So that we're just getting a little high air from them. Okay, so now we've got uh, a little sound leading into them that gives them a bit of drama, uh, and now I'm gonna add now a point of impact. Um, so with things like this, this is a very like uh, light weapon that we're doing here. So very just sluicy weapon. But if you don't have a sound for the point of impact when it hits the target, um, it really doesn't do it justice. Even if really it's more of a slice and there's no one point of contact, just look at the animation or the, or the video that you're working with and just figure out what would be a really good sort of hit points that you can, you can latch onto. So if I do kick... I'm just searching my library again. I'm going to say kick bag. There we go. Just got, um, it's like a sound of someone kicking a punch bag. I don't know if it's a real sound or if it's just synthetic. Um, let's just grab some of those. All right. So I've got some of them. Again, we'll make the last one bigger because we're going to be uh, making that more dramatic. So let's put this roughly in place. And I'm going to pitch this one down again. That's how I'm going to pitch that down an entire octave just for for drama okay so you've got uh, 
that there, that there, and then on this one, we're just going to make that bigger. Let's have a listen to, I don't know what that sounds like yet. So let's see. Well, let's hear it without, first of all. And then let's hear it with. Okay, so they're a bit airy and there's just a lot of details to them. Really, we only care about the thump with these. So let's take a little bit of that out. Um, and let's just give that a go, see how that sounds. Oh, it's a bit, bit ridiculous. I'm going to take a load of volume out of it and just see if, if that's where it'll help it. So there you go. That uh, might feel weird here, like just working in an abstract way. But believe me, when, when you um, put it in the context of the game, you, you'll really hear that, that it does a lot of heavy list, lifting for the uh, making it feel tactile. Um, so let's get a bit of splatty stuff in. I'm going to see what I've got for like blood splat sounds. Um, there we go. We've got some blood, gross blood sounds. So I'm going to um, maybe just this It's quite wet. And I think I might just use that for the last one for the like. So again, it's all about narrative. So um, if we're saying that it's slice, 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 and then the last one is the one that really does the damage, we need to make sure that we're telling the story of that last one being the dramatic one. So let's just get a couple of little mini splats, and then the last one we can go nuts with. Um, I realise you might be thinking this is a very haphazard way of working, but uh, I honestly think it's important. Well, it's taste, I guess, isn't it? But uh, for me, I have to work this way, just throwing paint on the canvas is what I like to call it. Just, you know, just trying things out. Um, you can go back and name after, but I mean, just it's silly to get ahead of yourself. All right, let's see what that sounds like. See, there we go. That's that's pretty good. So um, you could add in more and more layers of uh, the blood sound. Like you could have a little bit like drips of blood in between maybe. Like, if we get some long, uh, if we put blood spill, see if I can get some more blood sounds. Uh, it's actually strangely difficult to find um, good dripping blood sounds. Uh, they always sound a bit artificial. That's fine, just about. I think, um, so you can kind of just put in some detail uh, in between the hits just to add drama. So let's just cut together some of this uh, running blood. I did warn you this was going to be gruesome. I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, and then we can just put that here. We really turn that down and um, take out a lot of the, the, the weight in the sound. Let's pull up. It's um it's it's good practice any anyway, really, to um, watch out for too much stuff hanging around in your super low frequencies. If it's not doing anything in the sound, then just clean it out. It'll keep things sounding transparent and punchy. Watch out for this area here, uh, like 200 to, to 1K. That's just a danger zone. Uh, that sounds really ugly when it's got too many sounds using that frequency band. So just good to watch out for. So there we go. So there we go. And that's just, uh, that's just added some detail there. Now um, there's plenty of uh, available tools for just adding that little bit extra to um, to your, your sounds. What I'm going to go with here is uh, a couple of things that, that are just my go-tos. I really like this plugin from Waves. Uh, I'm not affiliated with anyone. I'm not getting paid to say anything's good. I just, this is something I like. Um, so I'm gonna go Big Bite, which is a uh, setting I've made in advance. Um, if I bypass this, you'll hear how this sounds without it, and then I'll play it again with it, and you can hear what a nice difference it makes. So without it. And now with it. Um, something to watch out for though is if you're using something like this that that's um, really sort of adds huge thickness and punch to your sounds just make sure that you're um, you're not getting uh, overly loud and squashed with it so I mean normally I would do a gain stage if I was organizing this properly so I go here and then I do a group channel which I'll call gain and so I would just uh, put all of these things onto a channel that we get to before we get to the master bus and I maybe just take 10 dB out just so that we're not hitting those limiters too hard. 
see now we've got that extra like color in the sound but it's retained its dynamism so there we go i think i'll um i'll save that one and then we can start again with a, a different example of something a bit chunkier and stabbier <laughs> All right, let's go for another one. So for this one, let's say we're talking about like um uh like a heavy. What should we go with? Should we go with like a like a big survival knife stabbing someone, like a really deep shunk stab. So it's kind of the opposite of that like light, airy, kinetic stuff that we did in the previous example. So uh, here, what you want to sell is is the 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 brutality and the power of it as it goes in, and then how much damage happens also when it comes out so because that can be really quite um uh upsetting in in you know in a <laughs> I was gonna say upsetting in a cool way what a horrible thing to say but you know what i mean uh you want the sense of youth when it goes in and uh how horrific that is and then as you pull out it's just like horrible blood and stuff going everywhere i did warn you this is going to be disgusting um remember if <laughs> i've got nicer um sound design tutorials if you would if you would rather stick with them but this is gore <laughs> all righty let's go with it um so uh, i'm gonna need to find uh let's do like i'm just gonna see what stab sounds i've got as, as a starting point in my library Okay. Uh, unfortunately, the word stab also has a musical connotation, which is it's not helpful for uh, searching. That's an interesting point, actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring these in because I can show you something of interest here. Uh, I these sound a bit like artifacty, and uh, I don't know I'm not awfully keen on the sound of these. But if you listen. They sound a bit crunchy. Um, something you can do to make sounds feel wetter is pull up and down these sort of frequencies here. See, like if I, I could tell you that if I, let's listen to it one more time. If I push these frequencies here, bring that down, bring that down. Uh, let's leave it like that, actually. That will sound wetter now. See, sounds a little artificial, but that's quite an artificial sound anyway. But Maybe we could have this as a layer, but I'm not awfully keen on this as a sound. Let's, we need to start somewhere though. Let's, um, let's pitch them down, see if they can withstand pitching. No, that sounds shit. All right, I'm getting rid of them. I don't like them. Let's find something else. Um, pitching sounds up and down, you do need to develop an ear for uh, artifacts and when it's just, it's damaging the sounds too much. There's some sounds that over time you learn um, as long as they're recorded at a high quality, uh, can sound really good pitched down. Like um, metal stress, things like that, you can pitch that down several octaves and you'll get really cool content out of it that can be very usable. Whereas other sounds like um, um, anything with sort of uh, artifacts or, or very resonant sounds that are more organic, they'll often sound really ugly as you pitch them down. But just Just listen to it and be honest with the the quality of the material and if you feel like you've mangled it too much like we did let's just kill it and get something fresh all right let's find something better for our needs okay these are all right let's let's go with these oh i think we've still got that resonance on we don't need that anymore Okay, very sluicy. Um, let's try pitching it down a little bit, but let's not go nuts. So I'm going to pitch it like um, half an octave. Can it withstand it? Yeah. Okay, I like that second one as a uh, knife withdrawal. Let's let's start with that. <laughs> Sorry, Alexa's trying to talk to me. I don't know why. Okay, so we got our starting point now, so that's cool. Let's um, now let's try some like a metal ringing. Um, this is kind of a, a, a filmy technique. Um, if you think to like um, scenes with knights with with those 
is it broadswords? Yeah, broadswords, I guess. Those giant swords. Quite often, like if they're swinging them around in films, you get like a like a ringing sound of as they come into hit. It's not really realistic, but it it sounds great, and it has that sort of the effect of like an arrow zooming towards you, of giving you like a narrative information of the incoming impact. So let's see if we can get knife ring. Let's see if I can find anything. Yep, here we go. So we've got some. Ooh, I don't know why I did that. Um, got some possible content here. Um, I could go nuts and try and reverse it. It might sound shit. Let's give it a go. Um, I'm just going to reverse that. Okay, it's probably too much, but let's give it a go. Like I said, paint on the canvas. Don't be scared. You get your best stuff by trying things. It'll definitely need to come down in volume. Let's try that. Okay, it's a bit fake, so let's maybe just really make it smaller. Okay, don't hate it. I um, think it's got too much middly element to it. Let's just bring some of that down. Right, uh, what we need now is something to kind of sell the idea of uh, sort of punching through uh, the flesh. So let's have a look at for some dramatic punch sounds. Let's see what I've got. Uh, punch impact, let's see. It's very dry, these ones. Oh, there we go. That's it's a little bit artificial, but... Um, might give us what we need because this is just an ingredient it's not a, a core sound so uh all right let's try without so for the we've got that and now let's try with too much at the moment let's get some volume out of it okay that's not terrible let's give ourselves a bit more room here so uh, maybe we can use a bit of another one for the withdrawal of the knife. Uh, it's worth a shot. What don't I like about this? Something's wrong. Let's take some of the attack off all this stuff, I think, because we're, we're pulling the knife. Out. Still possibly a bit loud. Okay. Uh, let's get some gore in there just so we can figure out what we're doing with the gore. So I'll just try gore stab in my library. Uh, stab. I remember I have, uh, I can't remember which library it is, but I've got some seafood sounds which are just fantastic. Remember, sound design is all about lateral thinking. It's not about finding exactly what it is you're, you're sound designing in your library. It's about thinking about what might sound nice. There we go. So these are nice. This is, um, I think this is uh, crabs being squished or something. But uh, let's just try some of these and see what happens. These are nice because they're, they're wet, but they're also a bit crunchy, like it's mangling the bone, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that last with the pullout's a bit dramatic, but I like that on the way in. All right, maybe let's just get some of the middle out of that because it's a bit middly. There we go. It's coming together. Let's get some blood in there, like we did on the last one. I'll just put blood splat into my library, see what I've got. Obviously, uh, yeah, uh, you can buy libraries and you can record your own content. I've, I've been sound designing for many, many, many years. So I've got a zillion billion libraries. Uh, if you don't have access to them, then it's a great chance just to do some some lateral thinking and some field recording and just go out and uh, and grab stuff. Um, you'll see that I've just I've put a, a very dramatic high shelf. Any sounds uh, that have already some qualities of high frequencies. Uh, sometimes a really dramatic high shelf can get you a lot of juice out of them. 
so things like like wet blood um, or uh, rustling leaves or like wind through trees. If you do some really dramatic high shelving, then um, you can get a lot of extra juice. So let's have a listen to that on its own. All right, that's too much now. It sounds um, artificial, but let's reduce that a bit and take a bit of weight out of the volume. It's probably a bit too subtle now. This don't know if the sound is actually responding to EQing very well. That's all right. But now I've lost a lot of the strength of it. Um, let's get a bit more blood and put it on the, the other side. This, this blood is very conservative, these, these last ones. Oh, that's quite nice. This one's got a nice, gross, goopy bit to it. Let's, let's just find out what we're looking at here with and pick out. I mean, uh, you obviously you get used to waveforms. I, I can see what's good there. So you can see that you've got obviously this point of impact here, which will line up uh, with our impact. And then we've got some nice squelching going on afterwards. So let's see how things are sounding. There we go. Uh, and now maybe if we can just find one last thing for like that withdrawal sound. Uh, I think I'll go back to the seafood, see if I can get something that sounds like uh, like mangled bone and wet blood. Let's see what I've got. Oh, there we go. That's That's got that nice uh, like mid-frequency feel to it that, that can give us a lot of... Maybe that. Okay, let's just grab this and stick this in. If we put this just before the um, the the meat of our, well, we don't really have a stronger um, attack point there. But let's just preempt the attack a little bit so that it sounds like it's having to like wiggle its way out of the the, the body. Let's take. Uh, oh shit, no. Let's move that there a little bit, and then let's take a little bit of weight out of that secondary bit because it's a bit too audible. And let's lose a bit of volume. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, I would spend 10 times the amount of time doing this this work, but it's just an example of how things can layer and some important bits. Although, you know what? I did miss putting a kick drum in there. I think let's try putting a kick drum in for real impact of the thunk. So I'm just going to grab a giant kick drum out of my library. Like an actual, just a cool kick drum. There we go. Perfectly fine little kick drum. And we'll put that at the point of impact there. And it'll probably have to come down because it's sound artificial, but let's try. So we can probably use that same kick drum, just pitch down maybe, and just take some of the, the attack off it so it's softer. And let's listen. This, this might be semi-final. Okay, yeah, kick drum's too loud. Okay, taking a load of weight out of the kick drum, so we just want it for that impact like we had with the razor blade. Okay, tiny bit more. To be very, you need uh, ears for this, you need to just uh, figure out the right level. There we go, can, can you hear the difference it makes if I mute it? And then with it, just adds that boom, boom, those, those percussive points of interest. Um, and then finally, let's do what we did on the other one. Let's use that um, um, the Waves plugin. Uh, let's just stick that on again. Do, 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 do. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use my uh, more, slightly more subtle one that I made. And I'm also going to just put this limiter on it just so that it's controlled. This is just FabFilter, just an absolutely brilliant company. Let's just go moderate. Uh, and we're just going to control the output. Um, I mean, all that sort of stuff is kind of uh, a lesson for another day, but let's have a listen to that now. There we go. Pretty nice, I think. Uh, so that would be a good like survival knife stab into the body and withdraw. So we got the uh, the percussive points of impact with kick drums, which is very useful. Um, keeping the source material all relatively similar sounding in terms of like that that wet blood and the seafood. There's no big reverb on any of it that's causing any issues. And then we've got the uh, the the kinetic elements around it. We've got that slight bit of reverse uh, metal ring, and then leading into the impacts, and then kind of a bit of silence in the middle and withdrawal. So that kind of stuff. You just want to get like a musical rhythm to it. Just um, 
pick your points for where it's good to be silent and where it's good to be loud and when you want to signpost what's happening, things like that. Um, it all takes practice, but it certainly is an awful lot of fun. <laughs> there we go. So, um, yeah, sorry, it's been a pretty long one, but um, I think it's a really interesting area. Um, I, I love doing any kind of cinematic work in video games and um, for Texas Chainsaw, like a, a lot of the, the core cinematic stuff has been this kind of like gore and things like that. So it's been a real pleasure. Um, if you've got any uh, questions after that that you would like answered, please do post them in the comments and I, I will answer them. And please uh, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, because um, uh, the more people that like and subscribe, the more videos I, c I can do, because it just justifies the, <laughs> the uh, quite a lot of time that I have to put into them. But um, this is something I'm really passionate about. I, I love doing this element of sound design, so I hope you got something from it, and I will catch you guys in a video. Peace and love. Boop. See ya.